the wallet-sized, console-sized PlayStation Vita for the home called the PlayStation TV is one of Sony's unsung heroes, and once you jailbreak it, its upgraded powers are legendary. In just a few short minutes, you'll be able to jailbreak your PlayStation TV so that you can start enjoying your content your way. Power on your PS TV and fire up your PC with its RGB. We've got some work to do to add some new special value to your PlayStation TV. Before you get started, we need to check a couple of things inside the settings application on your PlayStation TV. Use the D-pad on your controller to scroll the highlighter down to settings, select settings with the X button from the live area, and select start with the X button to launch settings. First step, navigate to network and select network with the X button to continue. You'll need to make sure your PlayStation TV is connected to either your wired or wireless internet moving forward. Once you've established your internet connection, press the circle button on your controller to go back. Then press circle again to go back to the settings main menu. You'll also need to be connected to your PlayStation Network account. Make sure that you go into settings and establish your connection first before proceeding. Once you're connected to your PlayStation Network account, press the circle button to go back in the settings menu. Before you apply custom firmware to your PlayStation TV, let's make sure that you're actually on version 3.74. Scroll down through the system settings until you see the listing for system and select it with the X button. The first listing inside the submenu is for system information. Select it with the X button. You'll see the software version number for the latest version of the official firmware that your system is on. Once you've verified you're on official firmware 3.74, press the circle button to go back. Next, scroll down to auto start settings and select it with the X button. Uncheck the box that says download file for system software by selecting it with the X button. There's no need to have an official firmware overwrite your custom firmware once you have it up and running. Press the circle button to go back one level in the menu to save this change. Now that all of these are set up, you're ready to start the jailbreak process. Press the PlayStation button on your controller, then press and hold the circle button to go back to the featured page, then press left to go back to the live area of your PlayStation TV. Let's transition over to your PC for the next step. You'll only need two downloads to make this process work, and both of them are hosted on the GitHub. The first one is called Final H Encore, or Final HE. This version of Final HE, as listed in the notes, is compatible with version 3.74 of the official firmware. Scroll down on the page until you get to the Asset section, then download the 7Z file for the latest version of Final HE for Windows. In addition, you'll also need to download the latest version of the Vita Deploy package hosted on the GitHub. The notes on this GitHub page also indicate that this is the latest version compatible with OFW 3.74. On that GitHub page, scroll down to the Assets section and download the latest version of the Vita Deploy package in zip format shown on the web page. Inside your Downloads folder, go ahead and uncompress the 7-zip file. I'm using Zipware for this. It's an open source uncompression tool. If you need the link for it, it's in the description. Once you have the 7Z file extracted, delete the 7Z file in order to eliminate clutter out of your downloads folder. Don't unzip the Vita Deploy package file. All you have to do with it is grab the entire package file in zip format and put it into the folder for Final HE that you just created. Navigate to the newly created Final HE folder and double click into it. You'll find an icon inside this folder for Final HE. Double click that icon to start the program. Inside the Final HE window, navigate to the text that says Trim H Encore to approximately 7 megabytes and click on it. It's kind of a small place to click with the mouse pointer, but there's a side cart menu to expand here. Come over to the right side of the Final HE box and click to expand the side cart menu. You'll see a listing there for Vita Deploy with a checkbox next to it. Click the checkbox to add Vita Deploy to the list of programs to be installed to your PlayStation TV. At this point, just leave Final HE sitting on your PC as is and transition back over to your PlayStation TV. When we last left your PlayStation TV, it was on the settings bubble in the live area. Use the D-pad to move the highlight over to Content Manager and select Content Manager with the X button. Then select Start with the X button to launch the Content Manager. From the main menu of Content Manager, use the D-pad to move the highlighter down to Copy Content and select it with the X button to continue. You'll be presented with a list of choices. Use the D-pad to scroll down to PC and select it with the X button. You'll see the name of your PC pop up in the list of choices. In this case, it's called Subscribe as a reminder. Select your PC from the list of choices with the X button. You'll be prompted to enter a numeric code in order to proceed. Transition back over to your PC and Final HE to get this number. 
Take a look near the bottom of the final HE window. You'll see the numeric code listed there. Please note that your code will be different from the one that you see on the video screen. Back on your PlayStation TV, use the D-pad to navigate the highlight down to the code entry box and select it with X. Then use the numeric pad to enter in the code shown to you in Final HE. Once you have the code number entered, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to register in the bottom right corner and select it with the X button. You'll be notified that your device has been registered. Then Content Manager will connect your PC and your PlayStation TV together. At this point, don't do anything else inside Content Manager. Simply transition back over to your PC for the next step. In the Final HE window, the Let's Go text is now highlighted in bold. Click on Let's Go to empower Final HE to be able to transfer over two files to your PlayStation TV. Once this process is complete, you'll receive instructions on screen. Don't do anything else with Final HE at this point, just transfer back over to your PlayStation TV. This is where we last left off inside Content Manager. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to PC and select it with the X button. From the list of choices here, select Applications with the X button to continue. Then from inside the Application submenu, select PS Vita with the X button to move forward. You'll see two files listed here. You'll need to highlight both of them with the D-pad and select both of them with the X button to mark the boxes. The first one is H Encore and the other is the Vita Deploy Package. Once you have both of these files highlighted, scroll down to the bottom right corner and select Copy with the X button. At the confirmation prompt, use the D-pad to slide the highlight over to OK and select it with the X button to continue. Give your PlayStation TV a couple of minutes to copy the files over to the system. Once the copy over process is complete, you're done with the content manager. Press the PlayStation button on your controller, then hold the circle button down to go back to the featured list, then press over to the left to go back to the live area of your PlayStation TV. Let's launch H Encore for the first time. Make sure it's highlighted and selected with the X button. Then select Start with the X button to continue. When you see the prompt about trophies, use the D-pad to scroll the highlight over to Yes and select it with the X button to move forward. You'll see a flash of colors on screen and H Encore will be running on your system. You don't have to do anything inside H Encore except press the X button for exit. Once H Encore exits, you'll be taken back to the live area, but H Encore will still be active. We'll need to enable Homebrew moving forward. Use the D-pad to move the highlight to Settings, and select the bubble for Settings with the X button. Then select Start with the X button to go into Settings. The first listing inside Settings will be Henkaku Settings. Make sure the highlight is set on it and select it with the X button. From here, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to Enable Homebrew, and select the checkbox with the X button to continue. That's all you need to do at this point in Settings. Press the PlayStation button, press and hold the circle button to go back to the Featured section, then press to the left to go back to the Live area. Next step, install Vita Shell so that you can copy over files via USB or FTP in the future. Navigate to the Vita Deploy bubble in the Live area and select it with the X button. Then select Start with X to continue. From the Vita Deploy main menu, Use the D-pad to move the highlight down until you get to App Downloader and then select it with the X button. From the list of menu choices, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to Vita Shell. Select it with the X button to mark a check in the box. Once you have Vita Shell selected, use the D-pad to move back up to the top to the listing for download the selected apps. Select it with the X button. Vita Shell will be downloaded. You'll see a blank screen for a few moments and then the Vita Shell VPK will appear on screen. To install VitaShell, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to VitaShell.VPK and press the X button three times. Once to install it, once to confirm, and once to confirm permissions for VitaShell. VPK files are package files that are much like Windows installers. Once you're done installing the package file, you don't need it any longer. To delete the file, press the triangle button on your controller. It pulls up a sidecart menu. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to delete and select delete with the X button. Then at the confirmation prompt, select Yes with the X button to delete the VPK file. Once the VPK file has been installed, you're done with Vita Deploy for the moment. Press the PlayStation button, then hold the circle button to swipe down and go back to the featured content area. Then press left to go back to the live area. You'll see the Vita Deploy bubble shaking booty on the live area, but don't go into it. Instead, go right back into Vita Deploy by selecting the bubble with the X button. And when the Start button appears, select it with the X button to go back into Vita Deploy. 
This time from inside the Vita Deploy main menu, use the D-pad to scroll the highlight down to install a different OS, then select it with the X button to continue. The first listing inside the submenu is Quick 3.65 Install. Select it with the X button to move forward. Give your system a couple of minutes to complete the downloads. Once they're done, you'll be presented with this screen. To continue with the custom firmware installation process, press the X button on your controller. You'll see a message that says to wait 20 seconds and read a notification. Wait out those 20 seconds. Then at the confirmation prompt, select Yes with X to install the custom firmware. Your PlayStation TV will run a system software update that looks like any other routine system software update. Once you're back at the live area, your PS TV will be on custom firmware, but if you stop here, you're going to miss out on some key things that you need to complete in order to maximize the value of your custom firmware. Navigate back down to the Vita Deploy bubble in the live area and select it with the X button. Then when the start icon appears, select it with the X button to launch Vita Deploy. From the main menu inside Vita Deploy, use the D-pad to move the highlight down until you get back down to App Downloader, then select it with the X button to continue. There are two recommended applications to download here. The first one is called Vita Homebrew Browser. Scroll down and select it with the X button to mark it with a checkbox. And the second one is called the ITLS Installer. Scroll down to it with the D-pad and select it with X to place a checkmark here. Use the D-pad to scroll back up to the top and select Download the selected apps with the X button. The two apps will be downloaded, you'll see a black screen, and the two VPK files will appear. Use the D-pad to bring the highlight down to one of the two VPK files, then press the triangle button on your controller. The first listing says Mark All. Select it with the X button to mark both of these VPK files at the same time. Press the triangle button again to reactivate the side menu. This time, scroll down near the bottom until you see the listing for More, and select More with the X button. You'll see a listing here to install all. Scroll down to it and select it with the X button. No need to sit and watch paint dry. All you have to do is press the X button three times for each of the VPK files as they're installed. They're already both highlighted, so just press the triangle button to pull up the side menu. Then scroll down to Delete and select Delete with the X button. And at the confirmation prompt, select Yes with X to delete both of these package files simultaneously. Press and hold the PlayStation button on your controller, then press and hold the circle button to swipe from the right down. From the featured area, press left to go back to the live area on your PlayStation TV. The ITLS program helps solidify your internet connection on your PlayStation TV. Navigate to it in the live area, then select the bubble with the X button. And when prompted, select Start with the X button to launch ITLS. The only step you have to take here is to select Install the full ITLS package with the X button. The ITLS software will self-install, and once it's completed, the PlayStation TV will restart. Once you're back at the live area, use the D-pad to move the highlight back down to the Settings bubble. Select it with the X button, then select Start with the X button to go to the Settings main menu. From the main menu, select Henkaku Settings with the X button. These should already be checked for you, but double check them just in case. Enable PSN spoofing needs to be checked. We've already checked Enable Homebrew in a previous step. Then scroll down and make sure that Enable Version Spoofing has been checked. You'll need to double check the spoofed version number by scrolling down to it and selecting it with the X button. At the time of this recording, the spoof version was still being represented as version 3.73. All you have to do to correct this is press the square button on your controller, navigate up to the number 4, and select the number 4 with the X button. Scroll down to the green enter button at the bottom right corner of the number pad and select it with X. Press the PlayStation button on your controller, press and hold the circle button to swipe down from the right corner, and at the featured content screen, press left to go back to the live area. Now that you have the custom firmware squared away, let's get your PlayStation TV overclocked to maximize its performance. Check out the video shown on screen, listed in the video description, and linked in the pinned comment to find out how this is done. It's always fun to feed more speed to your ride.